This is ADT 2150U, Digital Technologies and Advanced Teaching Methods. The title for this particular video clip is Open Learning. The Cape Town Open Education Declaration is a statement of principle, a statement of strategy, and a statement of commitment that was written during a meeting that took place in Cape Town in September 2007. The goal of this declaration is to spark dialogue and inspire action towards the open education, open learning movement. The declaration invites educators and learners to create resources and share them openly and invites educational institutions to adopt policies in favor of a world that offers flexible and effective education. You can read all about it on their website, www.capetowndeclaration.org. Open learning is an educational method that seeks to break the barriers of entry and access to higher education. It is a new distance education philosophy that was adopted in various institutions. The best example of such institutions is the Open University in Great Britain. You can read more about the Open University on the Wikipedia site if you only make a search for Open University. The point of interest for us is the teaching method adopted by that university. Needless to say, an open university uses a variety of teaching methods for distance learning that includes text, audio, video documents, internet documents, DVDs, television programs on DVD, etc. Let's look at a course that was designed for the program leading to the Certificate in Adult and Continuing Education at the University of Manitoba. The course has been designed to integrate the newest learning principles in Web 2.0 technologies. This is an image that uh, was taken from the Places to Go article written by Stephen Downs in 2005. As you can see, the course structure is quite complex. From an administrational standpoint, the course enrollment was capped at 25 students who would have marked assignments and who would receive credits toward the certificate. However, the course has no limit of non-credit students. Several thousand students can follow the course at the same time. The course uses a connectivist approach that can be called a massive open online course or a MOOC, a principle that we will analyze in the next video clip. First, make a list of all the technologies being used in this course. You can use the article titled Places to Go, Connectivism and Connective Knowledge to help you understand this figure. Stop this video for the time that you need to write down your list. Here is the analysis in a nutshell. The course starts with a blog. That blog is the home base or the hub for the course. From this blog, the professor, Stephen Downs, posts some entries that are linked to the class homepage. The class homepage is hosted in a Moodle space, where we also find a forum and other info about the participants, links to Facebook groups, and etc. Many other links exist, and these come in both from both prof and the students. <clears throat> the prof recommends to use an RSS aggregator in order to keep track of what goes on, if such a thing exists. To make sure that students don't get lost, the prof sends a daily email newsletter that students can either receive in their email or through an RSS feed. Many other options exist for students to participate in the course. There are tweets, a Google group, tagging resources, etc. Take a moment to reflect on what is expected of a student in a course like this one, as opposed to a traditional course. If you're thinking that the student might not have all the same experience and might feel insecure, and that there might be many students who drop the course, you're probably right. This is what happens when a course is designed as a decentralized course. The instructor will begin the course by telling the students that the resources are all over the place, that there will be more information than what they can read, that will arrive daily, and that they must find a way to manage their own participation. For the instructor, what do you think will be needed in order to facilitate a course and manage the pedagogical space? Can you imagine what the tutorial sessions would look like? Can you uh, either try to imagine Stephen Downs teaching one of his courses or listen to Alec Kouros? 
You can go uh, on this page, uh, which is uh, titled ECI831.ca, and click on one of the Blackboard Collaborate recordings. Ask yourself, what are the similarities between that course and the course that you're taking presently? What is different? Needless to say, in an open learning course, the teacher must not have a clear plan of what will be the learning experience, but he or she must have some solid technological and techno-pedagogical competencies. Can you jot down a few ideas of what those are so that we can further discuss them in our tutorial session? Now let's turn to the learner. What do you think is the role of the learner in an open learning course? What occupies the time of the learner? What does he or she do? Again, try to jot down some ideas that we can further discuss in our tutorial session. While this business of open learning might look dangerous, you might find it surprising that the Open Learning UK have ratings that are superior to prestigious universities. Traditionally, distance teaching institutions have significantly, significantly lower ratings because of inherent limitations of distance education. In open learning universities in the UK, they have particularly high ratings partly because of the assessment methods that support student learning and student success. Gibbs' article titled, Does Assessment in Open Learning Support Students? provide a good explanation of why this is the fact. The formative evaluation and feedback that is embedded in the learning experience is timely, frequent, and students take the feedback constructively because they are engaged in a deep approach to learning. When feedback is offered to students at a time when they can understand it and when they have sufficient time to adjust their next tasks, it tends to develop students' metacognitive abilities. These are concepts that we can further discuss during the tutorial session. The synthesis questions for this video clip are the following. Determine the theoretical underpinnings of open learning, including what is the role of the learner, what is the function of the pedagogical space, and what is the theory of the pedagogical competencies. What challenges does open learning pose to the instructor? And what advantages does open learning have for students?